So here's a look at my new 1966 Mustang. We picked it up from a pawn yard, and I have a couple shots to show you how that went down. We'll take a look under the hood. Right now it has a straight six. This is a three speed. It's, you know, looking pretty good with all of the extra twigs and leaves we picked up. It was a great deal if you look over here. We also got a V8 289 with a transmission and a cute pup to swap into the car. So we'll be taking a look. We first need to check all of the fluids, make sure we can get her running as is, see what condition she's in. She hasn't been fired up, at least in a couple of years. The registration on the car uh, license plate says 2001. So not sure what we're getting ourselves into, but we will have a spare engine that we can put into it as well. So let's see what happens. Here's the interior. You can see we're missing a couple of things like door panel. The door handle's on the floor, so I think that should work. Uh, you'll notice some nice rust spots over on the passenger side floorboard. So we're gonna need to weld in some new floorboards. The gauges hopefully will work. All of that is original. We need to tear out the headliner, that's garbage. Um, we'll probably need to get entirely new seats. We'll see how, how good the frame is. They might be able to just refoam and reupholster. Otherwise, we'll probably have to buy an entirely new kit. We got pretty lucky though. It came with a lot of the glass and chrome pieces. We're missing a few emblems for the sides, but those are probably easier to come by than not. Uh, we do have a gas cap in the trunk, the Headless Horseman. I think that will be a, an appropriate name for her. And we'll take a look at the trunk. Take a look at the trunk. And there's our Headless Horseman gas cap. That's kinda cool. Butter likes it. You're gonna mess up the paint, Butter. <laughs> but you can see there's a lot of crud and build up over the years. So we'll have to uh, take a look at the wires, make sure that everything is you know, not a complete hazard. Main thing I'm trying to get at here is the rust on this car is not bad at all for sitting outside for as long as it did. It's in great shape. There's really no rust on the quarters. Uh, there's no rust on any of the rockers. The fenders are all fine. We've got all the glass. Um, the only bit of real rust that we've got on this thing is this quarter has a little bit of bubbling rust right here. You're not helping, Butter. And then we've got a little spot right here. That's about it. Now we've also got some rust. Oh, you know, we do have one rust hole over here. But these all seem pretty straightforward. This doesn't have any crazy body curves on it. We'll just chop it here and then do a straight panel down. Now there is some rust on the floors, so it's gonna need new floorboards. But the trunk was fine and the floorboards should be easy enough and cheap enough. So we can see the seats are done. It pretty much needs a complete regut for the interior. But aside from that, we've got some rust here on this floorboard. Big hole right there, that one will all need to go. But the back seat, I don't really see any holes. There might be some surface rust. This actually looks like rust. But we'll grind it down and see how much we've got. Other than that, pretty much interior needs to be done. Um, and then some paint and body work, so. Brief introduction here. Oof. So the idea here with this guy is it came with a straight six from the factory and we're gonna see if we can get that running. It also has a three speed. Now we did pick up a spare 289 that looks relatively built from the pawn shop as well. It came with it and a four speed. So you might've heard that when I told you earlier. The idea here is we're gonna get the engine and the transmission hopefully running. We don't wanna put too much money into it. I don't wanna rebuild the transmission or the engine because we're eventually gonna swap it to the V8 and the four speed. So we're gonna try to get that running as cheap as possible. If that gets, if that's going, if it's running fine, we'll drive it around. Once we get that done, then we're gonna work on all the body work. We're gonna weld in new floors, get rid of some rust holes, take everything down to bare metal, and we'll do a spray, we'll paint everything. 
clean up the windows, the trim, and we'll throw an all new interior at that point. Once that's all done, probably drive it around for a little bit, enjoy it, and then in the meantime, while we're doing that, we're gonna take apart that 289 and rebuild it, and probably take apart the four speed as well, before we swap all that in there. So, in a perfect world, we can get this engine running here. We're gonna try to do that next after we clean it out. The last registration sticker on there is from 2001. So we're looking at roughly 20 years, potentially since it's been registered, unless stickers came off for whatever reason. Now the pawn shop did tell us that it, it ran and drove into the pawn yard about five years ago. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, we'll find out. But we're gonna clean this up right now and then we'll try to get the engine started and see if it'll move into gear and we'll go through everything that needs there and I'll show you the steps that I take when I'm starting an engine that's been sitting for a while. A couple things, we've got everything cleaned out. We're about ready to try to start it. Still gotta make a trip to the parts store, but what I typically do, first things first, make sure you've got oil on the dipstick. We're above the full line, so we're okay here. Now this, you know, who knows how old this oil is. We're not gonna actually really be running the engine. I just wanna see if it turns over and it actually starts uh, before I waste any money throwing oil in it. Uh, we will change the oil filter as well, but not before we start it. Now the main thing that I'm concerned about is throwing 20 year old fuel and pushing it through the lines. So here's the fuel pump right here attached to the engine. It's a manual fuel pump. As the engine cranks, this thing's got a diaphragm that pushes fuel. It sucks it from the tank and shoves it into the carb. We're disconnecting the inlet line and I'm going to run another tube from here into a, just a plastic gas tank. And then it's going to get sucked out here and I'm going to replace this line that goes to the carb with a clear line and I'm going to put my own inline fuel filter because they're five bucks so it's not going to hurt me to just throw one on there uh, to make sure we're not sucking any crud through there. Then what we'll do, well that'll take care of the fuel, that'll get us fuel to there, to the carb. Now it doesn't hurt, you can try to crank the engine over by hand. I already know that the engine's not frozen or stuck. So you've got a bolt on the front of the engine right down. It's right there if you can see my hand, right on the front of the crank. You can crank that over to make sure the engine spins. It's not seized up, so that's fine. Mm, so we made sure the fuel is fine. Make sure we have oil. We don't have any fluid in the radiator, but it's not gonna run long enough to be an issue. We will get some antifreeze and we'll go to Walmart for that, but it's not really gonna be an issue for us. Now, other than that, that's going to be about it. We'll see what uh, what condition the carburetor is in. The main thing you want to make sure, okay, brakes, obviously, we're not moving. We know the brakes work a little bit. If you pump them up, they get enough fluid. And I did check that master cylinder. It's got fluid in there. So we know that we have enough brakes. We're not really going to drive. We might put it in gear, go forward, backward a little bit. I'm going to check the fluid level of the transmission. But it shouldn't be a big deal for just starting it. So we're about ready to... Get it started in just a second, but uh, I've got some other hoses here. I have clear hose and I've got some typical fuel line. We are going to just run these in line to our carburetor and then into a fuel bucket and we'll try to start it from there. So that's going to be about it for now before we start it. We cleaned up the car. We added a seat cover. You can see the rust holes a little bit better now. Took the headliner out. Took that back. All the wasp nests are out, but we kept it in case we need a template to use. Come back.
Okay, we do have the battery on the trickle charger. It was at about 11.8 volts when I checked it earlier today, so I've got it charging over there. Now, one thing that I want to draw some attention to is this belt. If you look down here, the belt on the front of the engine is very cracked. This, I would not really trust it driving anywhere, but for us to fire it up, it's not a big deal, it's fine. Um, and that's to see if the transmission will move forward and in, in reverse, see if the clutch works. That'll be okay, but we are gonna get another belt for that before we really try to go anywhere. And we would put air in the tires, obviously. All right, so that's it. So we're ready to start it up. I got the battery charged. We're not at 12.6, it's at like 12.1. We'll see if that works. We're also missing a bolt to hold us down here. I think I've got it on there enough for now. We'll see if that turns over. This is what we hooked up with our inline fuel filter. This is something that somebody else had, but I wanted to be able to see it clearly. Now I have this running to our fuel pump down here with the clear line. And then here's the inlet for the fuel. We took it off of what was going to the tank and we're just running it from this clean new fuel jug right here. So we're not running whatever's in the tank. We're not gonna run that through the carb. We're gonna start with just this. We've got the radiator filled up so that we don't run the water pump dry. We did not get a new belt. That's okay for now. And we are about ready to try to crank it over. So we're gonna see if we can get the transmission to neutral and then crank it a little bit. Just try to crank, let's see if it even goes. I'm gonna throw some, not yet though. Do I need a break? Uh, no. Do I need a clutch? No. We should be in neutral. We'll lose some fluid and hold this. Harder? Yeah, give it a shot. Stop. You're, you're off everything? Okay, give it a shot. We're just now getting fuel to the car, so now go and give it some gas with your foot. Can we open the door? No, it's fine right now. Ready? Yeah. super yellow from sitting and lacquered up. So we gotta fill up this, this deal here. I wanna get some, all right, we'll do a little bit of this. A little bit of starter, but don't do anything. fired up. It actually started right away. It was pretty good. As soon as the old fuel cleared through the lines that was really mustard yellow colored and we got some clean fuel coming through, it did pretty well. We've got some leaks at our connections, which we just, we're using old hose clamps. So if you want to come over here, you can actually check that out. Maybe pull the camera in just a second. I'll show you it later, I guess. But it fired up fine. The alternator maybe might have been working. I didn't check it when we revved it, but at idle it was around 12.9 volts. So it was sort of charging. You can see we've got a couple leaks here, or right here I think is where it is. The carburetor does appear to be leaking just a bit over here on the side, so we'll look into that as well. But otherwise, the engine sounded really good. And we put it in gear, hopefully the camera stopped recording at some point, hopefully you guys got that. And it was moving, it kept moving forward. Every, no matter what gear I put it in, it was going forward. So I'll have to see what's going on with that. We didn't have reverse. It would, the car still went forward. So I'll look that up, figure out what's going on there. But otherwise, it worked great. So 
I think next step is going to be to rehook. From what I'm told, I think there might be a drain plug on the gas tank down there. I was talking to someone earlier today. Drain all the tank, all the gas, the old gas from the tank back there. There's a drain plug on it. So we're going to let all that gas out, fill it up with the new tank. And then we'll hook the fuel pump up to the original source from the gas tank. And then we'll leave our clear line on here and we'll start running it that way and seeing if we're getting a bunch of rust or what, whatever coming through there. See if we need to clear the tank a couple more times. But if that gas looks good, then from there we're gonna do, we're gonna change the oil up. Probably we'll do that actually before we run it again. We'll do spark plug, distributor cap maybe, and then we'll look more into the carb, potentially at rebuilding that. And then it's time to take it for a spin. We're gonna check the rear diff fluid level, and we're also gonna check the transmission level. We'll get it up on the lift here soon and figure out what's going on with that, make sure it's good to go, and then put some air in the tires, and we'll take it for a test drive. But the engine sounded great. Now, I didn't get a chance to get up to operating temperature, but it did sound great. Everything looked and sounded pretty good, so.